In this lesson, we're talking about familial adenomatous polyposis. So familial adenomatous polyposis is an inheritable condition involving increased risk of colorectal cancer. And it is an autosomal dominant condition, which means that you only need one affected allele. And that means that you are going to have one affected parent that is going to have this condition as well. So each affected parent is going to have a 50% chance of passing it on to their children. So this is what it means when it is an autosomal dominant condition. And this condition is actually due to a mutation in APC gene on chromosome 5q21. So if you want more information on exactly how this APC protein is affected, please check out my full lesson on the WNT beta catenin pathway. But I'll show you a brief diagram here showing you that when APC protein is affected, it is actually not able to break down beta catenin, leading to increased levels of beta catenin and eventual increased levels of growth and proliferation of cells. So this is the reason why we can see an increased risk of colorectal cancer and other cancers in familial adenomatous polyposis. We're going to talk about some of those other cancers later on in this lesson. So with this condition, as I mentioned before, it increases the risk of colorectal cancer and other cancers, but it has a particular prominent and significant effect on increasing the risk of colorectal cancer. And it's actually a very, very high risk of colorectal cancer in these patients. Essentially, 100% of patients with this condition are going to end up with colorectal cancer. And there are particular average ages of onset. And I show them here because I want to show you just how early on in life people are going to be affected by this condition. The average age of onset of polyposis, which are just having polyps in the colon, so polyps like this here, just having polyposis, so numerous polyps in the colon, is oftentimes going to be at the age of 16. So very, very young. We often are going to see this in the general population later on in life. And with regards to patients who have this condition, the average age of onset of having colorectal cancer is actually 39. So very, very young age. And again, it's going to be an essentially 100% chance or risk of getting colorectal cancer in familial adenomatous polyposis. Now let's talk about the clinical features more specifically in this condition. So as I mentioned before, the average age of onset of polyposis, which means that there's going to be numerous polyps or adenomas within the colon or the large intestine, it's going to be at the age of 16, so late teens. And by the age of 20, patients often have hundreds to thousands of these colorectal adenomas or polyps. So you can see in this image here, just an enormous amount of adenomas within the large intestine. And oftentimes, these colorectal adenomas are not going to lead to any symptoms until they become cancerous. But in some cases, in some individuals, in younger patients, they may experience unexplained hematochesia, which is bright red blood per rectum. So there's rectal bleeding, there's bright red rectal bleeding in some patients. And some patients can also experience abdominal pain and diarrhea before the onset of colorectal cancer. But again, oftentimes, it's going to be asymptomatic until the onset of the cancer. When one of these or many of these polyps become cancerous, this is going to lead to the condition of colorectal cancer or colorectal carcinoma. So patients are going to experience signs and symptoms of colorectal cancer. These are going to include abdominal pain, bowel habit changes. So oftentimes there's going to be changes with diarrhea and constipation along with some changes in stool caliber like a pencil-shaped stool, especially if the left colon is affected. We can also see weight loss and fatigue. These are going to be common constitutional symptoms in many different types of cancer, including colorectal carcinoma. And then we can also see iron deficiency anemia, which is going to be due to blood loss from a bleeding polyp. And because there's so many polyps and the cancer itself can cause bleeding. Patients are going to lose blood loss in their stool. They can experience hematochesia or sometimes melina, and this is going to cause iron deficiency anemia as well. So these are the signs and symptoms of colorectal carcinoma. If you want more information on colorectal cancer, please check my full lesson on this topic. Some other clinical features of familial adenomatous polyposis are actually extra colonic features, which means that extra meaning that it's outside of the colon, outside of the large intestine. So there's actually an increased risk of various types of cancers because APC, that protein, is involved in suppressing 
growth and proliferation. It's actually a tumor suppressor. If there's issues in that APC protein, it's going to increase the risk of many different types of cancers as well. And some of these include small bowel carcinoma, stomach cancer, biliary tract cancer, pancreatic cancer, thyroid cancer, and adrenal cancer. And then there are actually some ocular findings in these patients as well. And this particular ocular finding is hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelial cells. So this is actually going to be something that can occur very early on in life. It can be used to actually increase clinical suspicion that a patient has familial adenomatous polyposis. And roughly two-thirds of patients with familial adenomatous polyposis actually have this finding of retinal pigment epithelium hypertrophy. So how do clinicians actually diagnose and treat familial adenomatous polyposis? So the diagnosis and screening of this condition involves a family history. So we mentioned that it is an autosomal dominant condition with a very early age of onset of colorectal cancer. So a lot of times there's going to be a parent that has had colorectal carcinoma very early on in life, again, before the age of 40. And we're going to see this in an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. So a family history is going to be important when making the diagnosis of familial adenomatous polyposis. And then genetic testing is going to be the mainstay of diagnosing this condition. Again, the APC gene is going to be the gene that's going to be affected in familial adenomatous polyposis. This particular gene is not only involved in familial adenomatous polyposis, it can be affected and cause other heritable conditions that increase the risk of colorectal carcinoma, including a condition known as Turcotte syndrome. And if the APC gene is not found to be affected, and there's still high clinical suspicion that this is an heritable condition that increased the risk of colorectal cancer, looking at MYH gene can be important as well. This is another condition that can have some similarities to familial adenomatous polyposis, and that is called MYH-associated polyposis, or MAP. When an individual has been diagnosed with familial adenomatous polyposis, again, through genetic testing and family history, early screening with colonoscopy is very important for these patients. And the colonoscopies can be started very, very early on in life, may start as young as 10 to 12 years of age. And then in some cases, an upper endoscopy can also be used to screen these patients. Again, we talked about stomach cancer being something that is also associated with this condition as well. So an upper endoscopy can also be utilized to screen for other types of cancer. And then how do clinicians actually treat this condition? Oftentimes it's going to be prophylactic surgery because there is almost a 100% risk of getting colorectal cancer in these patients because there are thousands of polyps oftentimes in the large intestine. It is very difficult to do a colonoscopy and do polypectomies for each one of those. And oftentimes there's going to be ones that are missed. So a lot of times there's going to be prophylactic surgery that is performed. And this includes a proctocolectomy, so removing the rectum and the whole colon with a subsequent ileostomy bag. And then in some cases, a colectomy with an iliorectal anastomosis. So leaving the rectum, but removing the rest of the large bowel, and then having an anastomosis connecting those two. So those are some of the prophylactic surgeries that are utilized for treating this condition. And again, because there are thousands, oftentimes thousands of polyps, or colorectal adenomas that are found in the large intestine in these individuals can be very, very difficult to manage. So a lot of times, prophylactic surgery is going to be utilized in these patients. If you want to learn more about other types of heritable conditions and cancers, please check out my lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.